Uh, tonight what we're going to talk about is inflammation first of all and why inflammation? Well because inflammation is an essential part of our bodies, it's part of our defense mechanism but it has far reaching um, effects and is involved with so many different diseases and inflammation can lead to painful syndromes and also cause fatigue but more importantly we're going to talk about how treatment can help restore energy and rid, of us, rid us of some of these problems. Um, so, we're going to introduce you to the concept of beta-lanes, and what beta-lanes are, are naturally occurring pigments, there's a whole group of them, there's about 24 that have been described, and they're responsible for that vibrant purple color of the beets. So, who's ever eaten beets in the last week or so, you know that you get that purple on your fingers that just won't wash off, that's beta-lanes. And the other thing is, you've eaten beta-lanes before, if you've eaten any kind of food that's got a red color in it, that's beta-lanes. Now my goal tonight is to take a lot of information, summarize it, and put it into a language that we can all understand. What you do with that information is your responsibility. Because it's up to you to take that information and make decisions that hopefully will affect not only your health, but that of your friends and your family. And any good doctor, their job really is to educate the patient help you to understand what's going on, and help you make informed <coughs> decisions that will impact on your own health. And that's a key thing, that message that I'd like to get across to you tonight. And all of you, by the fact that you're here tonight, are educated consumers. You've come here to learn and ask questions and find out the true information. And you didn't come here to listen to me talk tonight, I hope. You came to hear about beta lanes. And one of the reasons and Ken's uh, very generous um, introduction. One of the reasons that I know what I know is because, as Isaac Newton put it, we stand on the, we can see as far as we can because we stand on the shoulders of giants. So I want to quote from Hippocrates, Hippocrates being one of the fathers of modern medicine, or of Western medicine, I should say. And what he said was that there are, in a sense, two, effect, two things in effect. One is to know, and one is to believe we know. To know is science. To believe we know is ignorance. So I'm not going to speculate tonight. I'm going to pre present to you some science and again allow you to come to your own conclusions to make your own decisions on how you want to affect your health and work towards what I want to call healthy longevity. And what I mean by that is leading long, pain-free, productive lives well into our advanced years, hopefully with the idea of preventing some of the diseases that up till now we've taken for granted as, as just something that's going to happen because we're getting older. That's really neat. So, we're going to talk about inflammation. And what is it? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's necessary. We have to have it. And it's going to help us get over that sprained ankle or, or broken bone or a splinter in your finger. Or if some invader comes into your body in the form of an antigen, something that's going to cause an allergy, for example, or an infection like a bacteria or a virus. You need inflammation to fight those things. It comes in about three different kinds. Number one, there's acute inflammation. So for example, you have an injury. Your body mounts an inflammatory response to heal that injury. That's a good thing. How about if you come in contact with one of those antigens or an allergy? Well, your body needs to fight that, it needs to fight the invaders. That too is a good thing. But what happens when inflammation becomes chronic? It doesn't turn off. Well now, inflammation can lead to a whole host of diseases. And that's when things get out of control. That's a bad thing. So I really want you to understand this process. And I'm gonna give you an analogy, an example that we can all understand. A little bit related to the race car too because I just can't get that out of my system. So if you imagine your body or a system in your body as a road where there's traffic and things are happening. And it's a busy, busy road. Now all of a sudden, there's a pothole. The road becomes unusable. That system gets disrupted and, and the traffic has to stop. So what does your body do? Sends out an engineer, the big sign that says inflammation. Blocks the road. Traffic stops. And that's what happens. So that system is done, roads closed, inflammation. Now the foreman picks up the phone, calls his workies, they come in, bring in the trucks, bring in the tools they need to repair that road. And that's what your body's doing to heal a problem. Well now the road's all clean, all fixed, everything's ready to go, foreman comes by, 
picks up the sign, removes the sign that says inflammation, puts it away, traffic flows. And that's what happens in your body. But what if he forgets to remove the sign? The road's fixed, you still have no traffic. And that's what chronic inflammation is. So this is what's happening in your body. And hopefully that little example of the road analogy will help you understand how that works. So what happens? What are the signs of inflammation? Well, you've all seen this. And, you know, doctors like to speak in long words. So in Latin, the signs of inflammation are rubor, or redness, calor, or heat, dolor, which is pain, and swelling. Those are the signs of inflammation. And you've all experienced those. And the more I've learned, and as Ken said, I've spent a lot of time researching these topics around food supplements, beta lanes, and so on, the more I've learned is that inflammation really is involved in pretty much every disease. And I've heard some experts actually say that inflammation causes all diseases. Now, I'm not really sure that that's correct, but clearly it is associated with all diseases. Everything from Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, neurologic disorders, gastrointestinal problems, cancers, you name it, inflammation is a part of it. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about arthritis as an example of an inflammatory product uh, process. We'll talk about pain. We'll talk about chronic fatigue syndrome. We'll talk about energy. And of course, we're going to talk about beta lanes because that's what you came here to hear about tonight. Now, being a Western-trained doctor, what did Western medicine treat, teach me? Well, if you've got a problem, you've got a disease, you throw a drug at it. And so we learn. And you can't deny that some drugs have had dramatic effects on society. A couple of examples, penicillin and insulin, two of the greatest discoveries over the last, well, probably 100 years. But are these really drugs? So how was penicillin invented, or not invented, discovered? Uh, was Sir Alexander Fleming in 1928, who by accident found that a mold growing, when grown in a certain substrate, had antibiotic properties. Isolated that substance, call it penicillin, and that was how the modern antibiotic era was started. In other words, it was nature's solution to, at that point, a life-threatening problem. And it still remains that way today. Well, how about insulin? Another example of one of the, the remarkable discoveries of this era. In Toronto, if you don't know, it was discovered by Banting and Best in the 20s. It's not even a drug. It's really an isolate of the pancreas. It's a hormone that your body normally produces. They used an animal model to, to do this, but that was nature's solution to a life-threatening problem. Mm -hmm.